Hey guys, Jeff with Two Moose Design here. Today we're gonna to give you guys a walkthrough of how we make this slatted pet feeder. This is the first style of pet feeder we came out with. We've made a ton of these, we sold a ton of pet, pet feeders in general, but this is the first original design. So we're gonna give you guys a quick rundown of how we made this. The plaque is not included in this video, but if you're interested in the plaque, let me know and we'll do a video on that. So I hope you guys enjoy. And if you guys make one yourself, please send me a picture, I'd love to see it. This is a 2x2 two two from Home Depot. We're going to cut five of these at 10 and a quarter. One of them will be actually trimmed shorter for a middle support piece. As you can see here, I slid this to an inch and three quarters. For the medium feeder, an inch and five eighths would actually be a better measurement. The slats are a little tighter than I wanted, and I'll make the adjustment to the plans. So now we're going to go ahead and cut five strips at an inch and five eighths, and this would be plenty to make the sides and the top. We're going to start out with the long pieces and cut 16 pieces at 22 inches. You will have a few extra, just accounting for knots or anything like that. Now let's move on to the side small pieces. We're gonna cut 12 at nine and a half. Again, you will have a few extra, but we'll end up using some of these for support as well. So again, this is a medium feeder. I have one middle support, four outside supports, 12 for the side. There's some extra here just in case and then also there's i believe 16 of these here you probably need a few less so i'm going to give everything a quick sanding now just to make everything a little easier in the end i like to just do a quick rough sanding before i assemble it so we're going to start out by assembling the short sides we're going to use a little bit of glue and 18 gauge brad nails to assemble it. So I kind of eyeballed these, but you can use anything from a pencil to a block of scrap wood to get your spacing perfect, or as clean as you'd like. Now we're going to jump over to the opposite side, glue the top slat and the bottom slat. And then line it up with your first side you assembled and this will kind of equal out the spacing on both ends to make sure everything's nice and even. So I'm going to set these up and now when you're gluing on your pieces you want to make sure you put all any knots or voids on the inside of the feeder so they're not visible. Unless you're going for a rustic look then add all the knots you like. So we're going to go ahead and do the same thing as the last time and glue the top and the bottom rung just to kind of hold everything stable. Just apply a little bit of glue in each one. You don't want to use too much, just enough to hold it, but not enough so you're going to have a big old mess. And I just do one brad nail per side, per slat. So now that all the sides are complete, we're going to move on to the top. So you're going to find the middle, which is 11 inches. Make a pencil mark. The support is an inch and a half wide, so I added a mark three quarters of an inch on each side of the center mark. A little bit of glue. Hold it nice and straight with some brad nails. Now you're gonna take your two extra side pieces and then cut them to size and add a little bit of support on each end. Just a line of glue and some brad nails. So now we're gonna go ahead and line up the top slats. As you can see, they're a little tight. I cut these at an inch and three quarters. I probably should have cut them in an inch and five eighths, but it's not that big a deal. So we're gonna go ahead and assemble it. Same thing as everything else, a little bit of glue couple brad nails. So 
So this is what it looks like now. I just applied a little pressure on the edge just to keep everything nice and tight while it hardens up. We're gonna let this sit for about an hour and then clean out, clean out any glue that drips down like that. So we let it dry overnight. Now I'm gonna go ahead and fill any voids and nail holes with this wood putty. It just gets a nice cleaner look in my opinion. Now I'm gonna go ahead and sand this with 150 grit just to remove any of the dried on wood putty and even up any of the joints. And then we'll do a finish sanding after we cut the holes. So I'm gonna use this to cut out my bowls. I made this on our CNC. I've used anything from a paper plate to a can of paint, whatever fits the inside di diameter of this. And then I'll just simply trace a circle on here or trace around whatever you're using. And then it'll give you the perfect guide for when you're cutting out your bowl. Like so. I went ahead and used a jigsaw here. This is the easiest method in my opinion. You probably could use a router. It's just a little less messy. So now that we got the bowls in here, we're sure that they fit well. You want them nice and snug, be snug, because if the bowls are actually too loose, they can like flop around and actually scare the dog. I feel that might be a little rare, but it has definitely happened. So you want a nice snug fit. And now I'm gonna go through and sand the whole thing one more time with like 180 grit. So now we're gonna show you guys how we're gonna stain this thing. This is quite a difficult piece to stain just because it has all the little nooks and crannies. When we sold these on a regular basis, we would spray them just because they were so difficult to stain and they took a while. But assuming most people don't have a spray, we're gonna use this foam brush just because the foam brush absorbs a lot of stain, making it easy to saturate and get deep down in these grooves and all these areas. You could probably stain this and then assemble it. It's just not my preferred route, whatever works best for you guys. And then we're gonna stand it with this vintage ash, which is a custom mixture that we use when we sell our items, sell our items on Etsy. So as you can see, I actually applied most of the stain with this rag here. And then I attacked the grooves with this foam brush. So now to remove it, we're just gonna wipe it all off. And it's important that you get all the stain out of the cracks like down in here, and again, just like your flossing, you don't want any of that extra stain to dry on there. You're just gonna go through and wipe everything off. And then you're gonna let this sit for at least a day, let the stain dry, and then you can move forward and apply your top coat. Here we're gonna use our Fuji spray system to apply three coats of a water-based poly. Assuming most people don't have a sprayer, you can easily apply this by hand. I apply three coats of the water-based poly, you want to make sure you get three coats on it just because your animals will drool and spill on this feeder and you don't want it to get damaged or discolored. So now we're going to attach this plaque to the front. Jess makes these. Um, I didn't show you guys how to make this in the video. I'm going to attach it now. Just with this countersink bit and two screws. If you guys are interested in how we made these, we make several. We do one with the painted numbers and we also do one on the CNC. So if you're interested, comment below and we can make a video on these as well. But I'm just gonna attach this now like this and then this will be done. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Go on over to Instagram and check us out. We post there daily and hope you guys all have a wonderful day.